Uh, here we are at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. This is the Tree Ring Lab, and my name is Arturo Pacheco. I'm a forest ecologist, and I'm working here at the Tree Ring Lab, developing a technique that is called wood anatomy. This is part of like a broader science, which is dendrochronology. What we do here is to try to get really thin slices of wood samples so that we are able to see the anatomical features of it for different purposes. So some of these purposes can be the health of the tree, how old is the tree, how it is growing. It can also be used for, for example, in archaeology. It has been used to being able to date all the structures and also being able to tell what type of wood is a construction made of, and not just that, but we are able to tell the origin of that wood, I mean, where it is coming from. Dendrochronology is the, the broader part of this science when we are using the tree rings to be able to put uh, the information that the, the wood gives us on a time context. The classic uh, approach is by using increment borders to get samples from the trees. And by sanding these samples, we are able to make the tree rings very clear. And um, under a, a microscope, we will be measuring every single tree ring. This will give us basic information of how good was the growth season of each, each, each year. And that way we can also uh, check on climate correlation so that we are able to see when the tree was growing really good. So probably very warm years. It was also very rainy years, depending on, on the site. Wood anatomy is kind of like a subpart of dendrochronology where we are doing micro slides from the wood. So uh, we take our sample that we use in classical dendrochronology and with this type of machine that we call microtomes, we get very thin uh, cuts of our samples and those cuts then we dye them so that we are able to see the cells. So we go from a very macro level in dendrochronology into a much more microscopic level. Over there we will be able to see not just how big is the ring, but we will be able to see all the cells within it and we can measure those, those cells. So we can start getting information at an intra-annual level. So we will be able to see what happened during that growing season and not just saying, okay, it was a good or a bad year. I'm gonna show you what's the process, the methodology and the protocols that we use to get these wood anatomy samples. So from the very beginning, we have this type of samples with a saw machine. We just get a strip of wood. That is what we're gonna need. And this is what's gonna go into the microtome. The very first step that we have to take uh, with the wood that we are going to cut uh, to get our anatomical sections is to boil it. The classic and the standard way to do it, uh, around 10 minutes for soft woods and probably uh, around half an hour for some of, of the hardest hardwoods that we have out there. Now I will show you the basic uh, tools and instruments that we use to start our process on, of getting anatomical uh, cuts from the wood. So first of all, this big machine that you see here is what we call a microtome. In this case, it's a sliding microtome. We will put our sample uh, on this platform here, and then we use very simple tools. Normally, uh, for us to, during the cutting process, we will just use a mix of water and alcohol, 50%, 50-50. The samples, we will put them on a glass slide, like this one, where we will be able also to write the name or the code of our sample. And we will help ourselves cutting with a little paintbrush like this one, and also a couple of tweezers. And with that, we should be able, with that and with a lot of practice and a little bit of talent, I would say, we will be able to get a very thin cuts from, from this wood. How thin? Uh, normally, um, we use this part of the microtome is to graduate how thick is the cut that we are doing. And normally we will be cutting uh, the wood from 10 to 12 micrometer. That's kind of like the thickness that we will need for this type of preparation. Okay, I think we are there to make some nice cuts.
Well, now after we have got our cuts from the microtome, we have to move to the hood because we are starting the coloring process of our samples. First step, we will put some bleach in our samples because that will help then uh, the color to stick on our tissues on, on, on the wood. After that, we will wash out the bleach. So I just take out the bleach with a bit of, of water. After that, we will go with our main colorant that we use, that is Safranine and Astro Blue. Uh, this, these are two different colorants. So uh, basically the Safranine is a red colorant that will um, attach its, itself to the lignin of the wood, while the Astro Blue will attach itself to the cellulose of the wood. So once we have already had our samples around 10 minutes on Safranine, we will just start washing it with water to get the excess of the saffronin out. As you see, we will be able to see how the saffronin just goes out of the sample. Once we get most of the excess of saffronin out, what I do is to use a small piece of paper tissue just to kind of like block our sample so that they will not be moving around. And we start washing it with alcohol 50%. Because even though here it seems that we have already cleaned it, you will see that the water will still bring out a lot of the colorant. And we will have to do this for a couple of minutes. So when we are here that we don't see that much pink color coming out of of the water, we can pass to the next step, which is the alcohol 99%. When I just keep it like for a minute with the alcohol 99% so that it will kind of like go into the tissue and bring out the rest of the, of the dye that we have. So we just, we will just keep on washing it. At this point, we just bring it here over a paper towel and we prepare our AO kit, which is our mounting material, which is the one that will make our samples a permanent, uh, a permanent sample. First, we take out the small tissue that we use to, let's see, we have to be really careful. There we go. We reposition our samples. At this point, they, they are very sturdy, so it's not a problem to touch them with your hands. And here we have to dry it. And this is kind of like the trickiest and the quickest part of, of the process. I do it once, I do it twice, and I already prepared the yellow kit. So in that case, I put a couple of drops in each of the sides so that it will not start drying and coral in. As you see, it's already, you can see it dry a little bit, but the drops will maintain it in its position. And here we have already enough mounting material to cover our glass light. So at this point, we just need to bring it, cover it, and we will just leave it for a couple of minutes that the mounting material will spread all over the sample. We want this to dry completely, but under a little bit of pressure so that the tissue will always be as flat as possible. So in my case, I'm using this plastic also um, to, to protect the surface because this mounting material can come out. So I put my samples inside these little plastic bags here and I have this metallic surface and these magnets. So basically once you have it there, we just cover it with one of these long magnets and a second one just to be sure that it's well pressed. After we have finished getting our anatomical cuts and after one day of leaving them to dry, uh, we will be able to um, clean them a little bit first before coming here to the microscope stage. Uh, we have to be sure that we don't have any type of specs from the mounting material or anything, so we will be able to get a very clear image of it. Um, in this case, what we are using here is a very simple microscope. The one that you will find in most laboratories. And over here, we are able to see really well all the features 
in the wood. For example, in this case, here we are looking at an angiosperm. This is a softwood type of tree. And what we can see is very clearly the vessels. This is where the plant uh, is transporting the water mostly and all the fibers that are the ones that are giving uh, sustain to all the, the tissue of the plant. Here I want to show you one of the applications of wood anatomy. In our lab, we are doing a lot of climatic correlations with our samples from tropical species. So basically, we need to measure um, our cells and do correlations with the weather pattern and the climatic data that we have from that side so that we know how the tree is responding to uh, let's say uh, years that have longer dry seasons or longer rainy seasons and to do that we use uh, a, a software that is uh, Roxas which is a software that will uh, automatically measure all of the area and uh, many other anatomical traits on the image uh, in an automatic form and it will generate us a big data set that is the one that we are using to do this correlation. Okay, so when we already have the image ready, uh, I want to show you just the automatic analysis that it, this program uh, does. So I have already set it for the species that we want. It will just ask me to, um, to find an area of interest. So I will just tell them that to analyze me, a square here compressing three rings. Here is, and Okay, so here the program will start going through a lot of different filters. It will start analyzing the whole image, taking out like shadow, like uh, a small, some cells that are not perfect. So in this case, I'm using a very small image because it will take a long time. Normally with the images that we are producing, it can take over 40 minutes, but that's because we are measuring millions and millions of, of cells. Here we are just measuring probably 500 cells or something like that. and. In, well, in this case, just in two minutes since we started, we were able to get the analysis of the image. Here you can see uh, the cells that the program has captured. Uh, if you are able, you will see like these dark spots. Those are like the, the rings and also uh, in vertically, there are some dark spots also. Those are the rays that are area that we do not want to measure. So in this case, we are just measuring really the cells that we are interested in, which are uh, mostly the vessel, the biggest ones, and some of the, uh, of the small fibers. I can change this here into the image with with um, with the real image and for you to be able to see clear ourselves we can do this and here uh, we can see the results normally uh, automatically we can design the the rings in this case i will just do it manually because it's a very small image so i can show you we normally visually can tell where the ring is positioned so it's just a matter of give these parameters because then the program will calculate all the data from the, for these cells and will position them on, uh, on the gears that we will tell the program. In this case, we collect them in 2017. So I can just put here 2017 so that it will give me, it already give me the gears. I have to update it. And here you can see already the program has assigned the, the year of study, 2017, 16, and just one piece of the 15. And after that, it's just a matter of calculating output and the program will um, give me a TXT file and also if you want an Excel file with all the different traits of uh, anatomical traits that, that this program is capable of uh, measuring. That is uh, the area of each cell, the diameter of each cell, how they are grouped, um, how far away are, are they from the limit of the ring. So at the end, we will have a lot of data to do our correlations and uh, we will not be able to do this if, if, it's, if it's not for our ability to get very good cuts, very good anatomical samples, so that the program will be able to measure it. So the quality of our sample 
is the most important step for the computer to understand the cells and give us the most accurate data for our objectives on research. My background is forest ecology. I have been working on the specific um, part of dendrochronology. I started working first in um, in agricultural sciences, and then I started liking a lot of the ecological connections with the forest. So I started moving into this part of forest ecology, and within this area, I learned about dendrochronology.